Hello, welcome to unit 12, where we are talking about acids, bases, and salts. We are going to start with the properties of acids and bases, which is going to be a lot of fun. I also will refer to it as the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases. Um, and that is because he's really the guy who came up with the modern definition of what it means to be an acid or a base. The question of the day, what do you already know about acids and bases and what do you want to learn? This right here is Savant Arrhenius. He's got a killer mustache and he had come up with the definition of what it means to be a base. So according to him, bases are ionic compounds that produce hydroxide ions when they dissolve in water. Just like any other ionic compound that is soluble in water, it is going to dissociate into its ions. So if we had, for example, sodium hydroxide dissolved in water, that's what that H2O over the arrow means, we are going to get sodium ions as the only positive ion and hydroxide ions as the only negative ion. He said this right here, this negative hydroxide ion was what made sodium hydroxide a base. Strong bases, ones that dissociate nearly at 100%, are going to be found in groups one and two on the periodic table. So this means that they, they love to dissolve. That's really what it means. So obviously, if you remember your solubility rules, group one ions love to dissolve. So sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, dissolving at 100%. And the same is going to be true for these group two ions, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, and so on. Here we have some examples of strong bases. Notice that some of them have only one hydroxide ion, where some others, because of that crisscrossing, um, the group twos with that plus two charge will crisscross all the way across the bundle and give us two hydroxides when they dissolve. Now, acids are a little bit more interesting because they are covalent compounds, and Arrhenius realized that. Um, that they are covalent compounds that will actually break apart into ions, which is a little interesting. That's, that's kind of what makes them different from regular covalent compounds. Um, so they are going to produce hydrogen ions when they dissolve in water. So if we have our classic hydrochloric acid dissolving in water, we are going to get a positive hydrogen ion and a negative chlorine ion. Uh, and this positive hydrogen ion is what makes the hydrochloric acid an acid. Now the process here is a little bit different because the acids are ionized by water. So what really happens is that they are attacked by water and they're forced to break apart. Um, acids certainly do have covalent bonds. They do share electrons, but the weird thing is that we're going to get ions that kind of break out of this covalent bond. Acids are their own category of compound. Um, it's also kind of important to remember that H plus hydrogen ions, they follow that group one always dissolves no matter what rule. The weird thing is that this didn't start out as a hydrogen ion. It was a hydrogen sharing an electron with chlorine. So that's why it's a little bit interesting that they're ionized by water, they're attacked by the water, and they're forced to break apart. So even though the process is the same, the language is a little bit different from a simple dissociation. Now, what's interesting about that hydrogen ion is that a lot of the time it goes and it sticks to a water molecule. So in case you don't remember, this pink and these whites, this is the oxygen and the hydrogens that form water. And oxygen is going to have two lone pairs on it, which I'm drawing as if you can see like the little bunny ears that go on the molly mods. And this hydrogen ion is going to be very highly attracted to the four lone electrons on this oxygen, that negative region. And when that happens, they are going to kind of bond to each other almost kind of ionically. They don't, they're just kind of attracted to each other. Um, so what happens is this hydrogen ion sticks to water. It still keeps its charge, but it'll have a new formula, H3O+, and that gets a new name, hydronium. Strong acids are a little bit tougher than the strong bases because they kind of follow the periodic table, but not really at all. Um, so we have three halogens, not fluorine. Um, fluorine is like, fluorine's electronegativity is too strong, so it won't let the hydrogen go. Um, but chlorine, bromine, and iodine are willing to let the hydrogen go and be ionized by water. 
So they are strong acids. They really like to break apart. And then we have a few with polys. So we have HNO3, which is called nitric acid, H2SO4, and that is sulfuric acid. And again, notice this two right here. This is going to give us two hydrogen ions when it dissolves. Um, and then we have uh, perchloric acid and chloric acid are also strong acids. This is something that you'll more or less have to memorize. The strong bases, you know, just memorize the groups, but the strong acids, a lot of teachers will expect you to memorize these seven as the classic strong acids. Some properties of bases that you may already know. Um, bases have ionic bonds. They taste bitter. If you've ever gotten soap in your mouth, um, that is what a base is. Soap is a base. So it's going to have that nasty, gross, bitter taste. It has a pH value greater than seven. It vocabulary dissociates in water when it breaks apart. It is going to produce hydroxide as the only negative ion when it dissociates and it can form electrolytes. Acids, on the other hand, have covalent bonds, and they taste sour. If you've ever had any citrus fruit, lemons, or limes, those are acidic. They have a pH value less than 7. They are ionized in water, so just, that's just the language vocabulary thing. Um, it is going to produce H plus as the only positive ion, which then will go on to bond with water and make hydronium, H3O plus, and acids will also form electrolytes. Electrolytes, remember, are solutions that will conduct electricity due to the presence of mobile ions. So if we go back to this equation, um, we have hydrochloric acid. It breaks apart into hydrogen ions and chloride ions, and these are going to swim around in water, and they are going to allow an electrical charge to run through that solution, and that's what makes it an electrolyte. The same is true for bases. So based on properties and on chemical formulas, you should be able to distinguish acids and bases. That's the point of this lesson. So if you are given a random formula, you should be able to recognize what is an acid and what is a base. Now, just one simple thing I want to point out here, actually two things. HOH is the way that you probably are going to write water when you are doing this unit. Um, this is N here for neither acid nor base. Um, so this H and this OH together are equally acid and base, so they are neither acid nor base. Uh, you can kind of con consider acid and base to be a spectrum. So if something is very, very acidic, it's a tiny bit basic. If something is very, very basic, it's a tiny bit acidic. If it falls right in the middle, it is neither acid nor base. We would actually say that that's neutral. So because this is equal parts acid as it is base, it's neither acid nor base. Now, another thing, specifically for kids taking chemistry in the state of New York and looking at that Regents exam, this is going to be the most common wrong answer that kids answer, whether something is an acid or a base. So this is CH3COOH, and it looks like it would be a base because you have this OH here on the end. Well, this is actually an organic acid which I will talk to you more about in the upcoming unit, but I just want you to know that because this is a, because this is an entirely covalent compound, it cannot be a base. Bases have to be ionic, right? So we have lithium hydroxide, ionic, and a base. Here, calcium hydroxide, ionic with a hydroxide, that makes it a base. NaOH, ionic with a hydroxide, that makes it a base. This is covalent, so it cannot be a base. So that's your clue up until we get to uh, organic chemistry and learning the difference between regular acids and organic acids. This COOH is a big flashing red light, like, hey, this is an acid. But for now, you can just recognize that it's not ionic, so it cannot be a base. All right, that's everything I have for you. Uh, please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson. Leave any questions you have in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.